What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to talk about how to get a 5 on the AP Calculus AB or BC exam. Now, for a little background, I taught AP Calculus for a while. I've led, this will be my eighth group that I've led up to the AP Calculus exam. And I'm just going to go through some of the tips I think that'll lead you to a 5. So the first thing is know all the topics. So if we check out this list here, you could see that there are 10 units on the AP Calculus BC exam, and there's eight units on the AP Calculus AB exam. And this is the percentage breakdown of each topic. So you could see here that some of the big hitters are unit six, unit nine, and unit 10. And if you're in Calc AB, we could see here unit six, and then we have unit four and unit eight are the big topics. So when you are preparing, just make sure that you're spending an appropriate amount of time on the topics that are most likely to be covered. So if we dive deeper into this document, you could see that all 10 units, we have a list of every topic that we need to know for each of these units. So what I would do is I would take a practice exam, see which questions you get wrong, and think about which topic it is you need to review. And then you could do more concentrated practice in the weeks leading up to the exam. Now, if this is the week or night before the exam, then you just wanna focus on practice tests. But if you have the time, this is a very helpful list to have because once again, you could focus on the specific things that you don't understand. Now, this tip may be obvious, but do as many practice tests as you can. Now, if you want to get a review book to do your practice test, I highly recommend either the Barron's Review Book or the Princeton Review Book. From teaching this course over the years, I've had students rave about both of these books, and I've had plenty of students get a five that used either of those books. So those are two excellent resources you could use. Now, there are plenty of free practice exams you could go through if you don't want to buy a book, such as the 2012 exam. So when you're going through an exam like this one, just make sure that you're timing yourself based on how much time you'll actually get for the real AP test. So when you get to the end of the exam, use the scoring worksheet to give it a grade. And depending on what your goal is, you can see how far away you are from your goal. And notice for this particular exam, we need a raw score of 68 out of 108 to get the five. And what's nice about these scoring worksheets, those of you taking BC, they have an AB subscore worksheet so that you could see what would your score be on the AB portion of the exam. So once again, if you missed the five on Calc BC, you could see how you would do on the Calc AB portion of the exam. Tip number three, master the free response rubric. So let's say we focus on 2019 and we'll look at the free response questions for this year. And in particular, I wanna look at question six. So for something like this, let's say you go through this exact question. One thing you should do right after is go to the scoring guidelines and see how many points is part A worth, B, C, in this case, part D. And think about what exactly do you need to have in your solution in order to get all of those points. Because there are plenty of students that think that they know what they need to get full credit, but they're missing little details. I'm gonna look at sample responses here, and that's another resource that's truly amazing. If we once again focus back on the main page, the sample responses will give you exact replicas of student work and see what scores they got with commentary. So for this one here, this is the first student that gets nine out of nine, and we could look at what a perfect solution looks like. But sometimes you could gain a lot from learning from the students that did lose points. For example, this student here, the student who got six out of nine points, I'm gonna focus on the last part, and notice they were looking for the alternating series error bound, and something as simple as them not saying the absolute value of the error is less than or equal to 0 0.45 lost them credit for this part of the question. This is a very, very, very important detail of how you're gonna be graded in the free response section of the AP exam. So just being able to do the math, implementing the mathematical processes, you're gonna earn 37 to 59%. Connecting representations is this percent here, Justifying your work is some percent here, but this is a massive one that gets a lot of students. Communication and notation. So in that previous example, that student not writing the absolute value of the error is an example of a communication notation mistake. And that student knows what they're doing, but they lost annoying points because they didn't communicate it in a way that College Board wants to see. So just make sure not only do you know the math, but are you saying it in a way that's technically sound? Is your notation good? And are you actually using the theorem that you're trying to use. Tip number four, be able to say, draw, and apply each theorem. So let me use the mean value theorem as an example. So if someone were to just say to you, quick, what's the mean value theorem? You should be able to just cite it right on the spot. The next thing you should be able to do is draw out the mean value theorem. 
showing here that if I have a continuous and differentiable function, that at some point c between a and b, the slope of the tangent line is going to be equal to the slope of the secant line. And then the next thing you would be able to, well, you should be able to do is apply the mean value theorem to a question like this in the multiple choice section. Now, next level, if this was a free response question, this wouldn't get full credit because no, uh, note that nowhere did I state that my function f is continuous from 0 to 1 and differentiable on the open interval from 0 to 1. So just be very mindful that you need to know a lot about a single theorem in order to get full credit on it in the multiple choice and the free response section. Tip number five, prioritize big concepts. So I watched a short interview between Salman Khan and one of the head people for AP Calculus over at College Board. And the main theme of the interview was that you should be focusing on the big ideas and not the small stuff. Like if you forget the derivative of cosecant inverse, that's not gonna ruin your score. But if someone were to ask you a question, what is a derivative? If all you're able to say is, I know how to do the power rule, then you're not gonna be that ready for the exam. You should know that a derivative is gonna tell you all these things. And in many cases, it could tell you more than this. So that's the kind of stuff that you wanna be focusing on is the really big stuff. And if I were to ask the question, what is an integral? What does an integral tell you? Your list should be equally as awesome as this list here. So once again, make sure you're focusing on the big ideas. And once again, if we go back to this list, the big ideas could be found by looking at the exam weight for either the AB or the BC exam. So knowing that an integral can be used to show accumulation of change is likely to show up every fifth question in the multiple choice. If it's 20% of the 20 percent of the exam, every five questions is gonna ask you something based on this. Tip number six, be awesome with the calculator. So for this exam, you get to use a calculator for two of the sections. And let's say y equals or f of x is equal to some massive function here. And you have to take a derivative of this. Please do not spend 30 minutes doing quotient rule, chain rule, product rule, and all that stuff. If you had to take a derivative of that function, just press math eight and it pulls up the derivative. And instead of retyping that whole function, we saved it in the y1 spot. We could press vars, we go to the right, we go to function number one, and we just type in y1. And now let's say I want the derivative at x equals three, I get it all in one shot. So know how to do all of these calculator shortcuts. And if you need to switch over to parametric polar, if you're taking BC, know how to navigate the ins and outs of this calculator so that you're not spending any time doing derivatives or integrals by hand. And the final tip, tip number seven, maximize class time. I've led, once again, this is my eighth group that I'm leading to the AP exam. And the students that have gotten fives, one thing they all had in common that stood out to me was that they were always very focused in class. They never accepted when they didn't know how to do something. They either ask me, they would ask a classmate. And remember, you're not going to understand everything 100% the first time you learn it. You'll be lucky if you get to leave class with 70% of what you learned, you have to go home and make up the other 30%, but you wanna maximize class time so that when you go home, you don't have to spend all this time and all this energy trying to learn the stuff that you could have learned in class. So that means, once again, you're going to class, you're paying attention, you're asking questions too when you don't know what's going on. Don't just sit there and suffer and drown silently. Just raise your hand, ask your teacher for help, ask your classmates for help, and make the most out of your class time. All right, well, this is going to wrap up this video. I wish you the best of luck on your AP Calculus AB or BC exam. Leave any other tips that you have in the comments section below. And when your test is done and you get your grades back, come back to this video and let me know what score you got. And thanks for watching.